Uh, we're going to talk about um, the man who heads up the army, uh, General Sir Patrick Sanders, and he is the new chief of general staff. And he said that British soldiers may soon need to fight in Europe once again following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, former chief of the general staff, Lord Dannett, joins us now. Thank you very much for your time. What did you make of General Sanders' comments? It, it came to people who aren't in the army as a bit of a, a rallying call. Yes, um, I, I know Patrick Sanders well, and he is being characteristically straightforward and open with the troops under his command. And he's, and he's looking around at the situation uh, in Europe, the situation between Russia and Ukraine, and is making the very reasonable deduction that um, we must be prepared to fight for our um, independence and our, and our freedom, just as we've had to do in the past. Now, that's not to say that is definitely going to happen, uh, far from it. But um, what he's really saying is that we must be prepared in every possible way to fight. And this acts as a very strong deterrent to Russia becoming more ambitious and pressing somewhere else uh, along its border. Um, if you think back before February the 24th, before um, Vladimir Putin attacked Ukraine. He was making all kinds of noises about wanting to <clears throat> roll the influence of NATO back, wanting to extend the influence of Russia. And <clears throat> by inference, he was talking about pressing maybe in the Baltic states, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, pushing on Poland and other countries like that. Now, that's not going to happen in the short to medium term, for sure, because he's had a very bloody nose in the fight with Ukraine. But while he is still the Russian president, uh, he will continue with this mantra of wanting to press and extend Russian influence. And we must be prepared to stop that. And the best way that we will stop that is being well-armed, well-trained, um, have a forward presence to deter him being expansionist like that again. And that's what General Patrick was talking about. General Patrick is, uh, you know, he's obviously preparing the people under him uh, for war, just in case. Um, and he's sending a message to politicians. Politicians aren't sending the message that says, there will be boots on the ground in in Europe at all. Uh, in Europe at all, but but what Lord Dannett, what state is the British Army in? The British Army that you knew now under Sir Patrick Saunders, what's he inherited? Well, he's inherited an army that is uh, twenty five to thirty percent smaller than the one that uh, I handed over to my successor in two thousand and nine. In those days, we were well over a hundred thousand. And now we're coming down to somewhere around about 72,000. Uh, we had um, a much greater military capability. If you recall, back in um, 2007, 8, 9, we were fighting two major campaigns in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Uh, and we would struggle to do that at the present moment. But um, there is nothing wrong with the leadership, the enthusiasm, the determination, the professionalism of the British Army. It is just considerably smaller than it was. And, and this is a critical point, and myself and others have been raising this point to the government over recent months. Uh, it is not as well equipped as it should be. Uh, the um, integrated review, as it was called, that was published in March last year, uh, set out our future for this country, uh, security, defense, and foreign policy uh, arrangements. And there was a significant tilt, as it was described, to the Indo-Pacific, uh, with a greater emphasis on our maritime forces, uh, and going along with that with our air forces as well. So the army has been the poor cousin, if you will, uh, over, the last, over the last several re years, really since the campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan finished. Now, that's all well and good until Mr. Putin decides to start a land war in Europe. And that brings us up short. And you have to ask the question, uh, are we in the UK, uh, have we invested sufficiently in our land forces, in our army, that we can play our part in the future security of Europe? And I've spoken twice in the House of Lords in the last two or three weeks to say, no, we need to be increasing our defence spending from 2% to 3% of our GDP. We need to be investing in more armour, uh, both uh, tanks and armoured infantry fighting vehicles. We need more artillery. We need more air defence artillery. And frankly, if we're going to play our part uh, as a NATO member and as, uh, well, not in the European Union, but we physically are part of Europe, we must play our part in European security and invest more in our land capability. And that's where General Patrick has, has got a problem, because he wants to make the army as capable as possible. But I would submit that he hasn't got the tools that he needs to do the job at the present moment, <laughs> just as I'm afraid I struggled with that in 2006, 2009, 
when we were fighting two campaigns and only really equipped to do one of those. It's an age-old problem, but we've got to keep banging the drum to make sure that this government understands its first duty, which is to protect the people of this country and, by extension, the people of Europe. It sounds like what you're saying, just briefly, is that the British Army have been told to prepare for war, but we don't have enough infrastructure to prepare properly. Look, we've got 148 main battle tanks. You're not going to fight a war and win a war with 148 main, main battle tanks. Um, that's frankly uh, enough to equip two brigades, two small groups, whereas in the days of the Cold War, we fielded four armoured divisions. What's a division? About 25 to 30,000 30, soldiers. We had four divisions. We haven't got a deploy single deployable division now. So if we want to be taken seriously and we want to... Um, we want to have the influence that our politicians want us to have, and certainly the influence that their words suggest that they want us to have. We've got to have a greater investment in our land capability and get on with it pretty quickly. And, and also, just bear in mind, we have been giving <clears throat> to Ukraine uh, a lot of our anti-tank weapons, um, the NLAW anti-tank weapon, um, very effective, but we've given a huge proportion of our stock away. We've got to start restocking pretty quickly and expand our own capability. And um, General Sanders is right. If this isn't a message to the government, he's just saying to the army, we've got to be prepared to do our job and um, let's make sure we've got the tools to do the job with. Well, fascinating to hear your take on things, Lord Dannett. As, as always, we appreciate your time and your analysis um, this morning. That's Lord Richard Dannett, former chief of the general staff and former head of the British Army. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.